Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University at FlashGameU.com, and today I want to look at a game, I call them the catching games. Uh, this is when you have things falling from the top of the screen down to the bottom, and you've got some sort of bucket or something moving left and right with the mouse that you can use to collect the items. Um, it's a pretty common game. I've used it in a lot of my books. I didn't have uh, room for it in the ActionScript 3.0 Game Programming University book, so I wanted to uh, talk about it now. So basically here I've prepared a Flash movie uh, with a bunch of movie clips. And uh, first off we've got uh, the catcher here, which is just a simple little uh, just a half circle here. And I've gone ahead and named that uh, catcher and also assigned the symbol property so it is of class catcher. I've also created four objects here, uh, circle one and circle two, square one and square two. So the idea being that I want to demonstrate how you can have some objects you're supposed to catch and some objects you're not supposed to catch. So you can use this in kind of an educational way. Uh, for instance, uh, catching um, vowels rather than consonants. Uh, you can catch uh, certain words, verbs, instead of nouns. You can catch uh, equations that are correct versus ones that are incorrect. Um, or just uh, objects, uh, things that are uh, pollute the environment versus things that are good for the environment, that type of thing. So I've got four different objects here that represent them, and they're all um, named with classes that uh, match the names in the library here. So uh, Circle 1 is, for instance, the class Circle 1. So we can create them very easily. Now um, I name this catching game.fla, and uh, in properties for it, I've set the document class to be catching game as well. So I have catching game.as. So that's where we'll start. Uh, creating some action script for that. Um, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to just uh, paste in here some uh, beginning stuff, uh, which will save us some time. Here we've got the uh, the basic package. We know we're going to use flash display, flash events. Uh, we're also going to use a timer here to create the objects um, falling from the top of the screen. And we're also going to use a get definition by name. One of the things I want to demonstrate in this is the ability to uh, create objects just from the class name. So you don't have to actually hard code in the classes. You can use strings to represent them. Um, so here is uh, the, the public declaration of the class. Nothing surprising there. Now I want to go ahead and start working here. Um, I'm going to need some variables here. One of the things I need is a next object. Um, timer. So this is from uh, the air raid example in the game. There was a, a timer that basically set off every few seconds to create another airplane going across the screen. We're going to use that same type of functionality here to have something drop from the top of the screen. Um, we're also going to have an array with all the falling objects in it. We're going to call that objects and we're going to initialize it. And lastly, for this portion, we're going to know that we need a uh, constant for speed, um, which will be how fast objects fall. And we're going to set it to uh, something like 7.0 right now. Great, so now we're ready to go ahead and create the uh, constructor class. Of course, that's got to have the same name. And what we're going to do here is we're going to immediately call a set next object. Again, you can find out more about that type of functionality in the array game in the book because uh, almost do exactly the same thing there. We're also going to add an event listener enter frame uh, that's going to call a move objects. So uh, this first one here, set next, ob set next object, will uh, create the objects. The next one will move the objects as they fall down the screen. And that's all we need for right now uh, in the constructor function. We're only going to, in this portion, uh, look at the falling objects. So we'll do this. So this is pretty much uh, right from uh, Air Raid. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in that code and explain it. Save some time. Uh, next object uh, is going to be a timer. That's going to be um, a th one second plus a random period between uh, zero and another second, so between one and two seconds. And we're only going to set the timer to run once. Uh, when it completes, it's going to call new object, and we're going to start that timer. Um, and then we've got uh, this function new object, and this gets a little bit more complex. Instead of typing here, I'm going to uh, paste it in and explain it bit by bit. So we've got the new object, so this 
comes in and it says, okay, great, I want to go create a new object. It's going to either be circle one, circle two, square one, or square two. But some are good and some are bad. We're going to do um, circles is good in this case. So we're going to create a variable called good objects, and these are strings of the class names. Bad objects, strings of both of the bad object class names. You can add more to these. Then I'm going to, on a 50-50 change, create either a good object or a bad object. If it's a good object, I'm going to get a random number here. Uh, that is going to be equivalent to 0 to the length of the number of good objects. In other words, in this case, 0 or 1. If there were 7 objects there, it would be 0 through 6. Um, then we're going to use um, get definition by name to create a temporary variable here that has the same name as the class. In other words, if it's circle 1, we're going to create a definition of circle 1 as a class, store it in this class ref variable, so then we can create a new object of type movie clip is a new class ref. So equivalent of saying uh, new object circle one is new circle one, we're actually going ahead and creating a new movie clip that's either class circle one, circle two, or in the case of the code down here, square one, square two. We're also going to go ahead and set, since a movie clip is a dynamic type of object, we can set new object type string so type str is something we made up, and it's a dynamic variable we're assigning to new object. Uh, and we're setting that to be the string good. Same thing down here, except we're going to use bad. That way, each movie clip will remember whether it's a good one or a bad one. Then we'll set a horizontal position, uh, just random x position for the new object. We'll add it to the screen, and then we'll add it to our objects array right here. And then we'll go ahead and say set next object. In other words, okay, we've done this one. Let's create another one and another one to two seconds. So the next function is we'll complete what we've got now, and it's basically uh, the move objects function. This is going to be called every frame. Remember, up here we create an event listener. Um, I'm sorry, up here event listener and a frame move object. So every frame is going to get called. It's going to loop through all of the different objects backwards. Um, and it's going to move the y position down according to the speed, that constant we set. If the object is, is further than 400 pixels down off the bottom of the screen, then we're going to remove it and splice it away from the array. That's why we need to move backwards. So if we splice one away from the array, we don't trip over ourselves in the array. Moving backwards means we can remove, say, uh, falling object number 5, go on to look at object number 4, not having to worry about the fact that we just removed one. If you do it forwards, you run into a problem removing, say, 4, and then moving forward to 5, because the array has shortened in the time that you've been looping. So let's go and take a look what happens when we run this. We'll save, run, uh, let's see, we've got uh, undefined property move object. Um, probably just didn't add the S here. There it is, move objects. Run it again. There we go. We wait a second. There's one object falling. There's another object falling. You can see that's a square, that's a circle, that's a square, that's a circle. Now we got objects that are falling. In the next segment, the next episode, I'll go and we'll create the bucket and try to catch these objects. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University at flashgameu.com.